Good evening. I'll call to order the Arvada City Council meeting for April 5, 2021. Call upon Councilmember John Marriott. If you'd please join me in a moment of silent reflection. And now the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Kristen Rush, if you'll do the roll call. Mayor Williams. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Miller. Here. Council Member Pfeiffer. Here. Council Member Ford. Here. Council Member Jones. Council Member Marriott. Here. Council Member Simpson. Here. Entertain a motion, Mr. Pfeiffer. I'd like to move to excuse Council Member Jones from tonight's business meeting. Ms. Ford, how do you vote? Yes. And the rest of council has voted yes as well, so that passes unanimously. Mr. Um, Jones is excused from tonight's meeting. Next, we have the minutes for March 15, 2021. Any changes or corrections? Seeing none, they will pass as presented. Next, I'll call upon Mayor Pro Tem Dot Miller for a proclamation. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, it's my pleasure to uh, make this proclamation this evening. I've served on the board of directors for the Ralston House for some time. And um, so although this um, issue is not a fun one to talk about, it is a very important one to talk about. So the city of Arvada is proud to partner with Ralston House Child Advocacy Center in recognizing April as Child Abuse Prevention Month on behalf of the many children who were interviewed at Ralston House in 2020, as well as the children and teens who are suspected of being sexually or physically abused. These children and their families directly benefit from the family-friendly care provided at Ralston House in 2020 and beyond. Ralston House provides comprehensive services to child victims and their families as they begin the healing process after traumatic experiences. During the month of April, our community joins with those who have suffered abuse by planting pinwheel gardens of hope. The fundraising goal for 2021 is $60,000, which will be raised from large community gardens and from selling individual pinwheels. I have a couple of them here. As our streets and neighborhoods become planted with pinwheels, we encourage all our Vada citizens to join in renewing our commitment to preventing child abuse and learning what we can do to promote the safety and well-being of the children. A representative from Ralston House is with us online. Thank you so much for being with us. I'm going to read this proclamation, and then you could tell us where people can donate as well, if you wouldn't mind. So this proclamation from the city of Arvada reads, whereas, although every child deserves to grow up in a nurturing environment, free from harm and fear, all children do not receive appropriate care. In fact, too many children become victims at the hands of abusive perpetrators. And whereas Arvada has dedicated individuals and organizations who work daily to counter the problem of child abuse and to help parents obtain the assistance they need, and whereas our community is stronger when all citizens become aware of child abuse prevention and become involved in supporting parents to raise their children in a safe and nurturing environment. And whereas effective child abuse prevention programs such as Ralston House succeed because of partnerships among families, social service agencies, schools, religious and civic organizations, law enforcement agencies, and the business community. And whereas it is up to us as a community to work tirelessly to end the abuse through awareness and action, and whereas all citizens, community agencies, faith organizations, and businesses will work to increase their efforts to support families. Now, therefore, it be proclaimed, the mayor and the city council of Arvada hereby designate the month of April 2021 as Child Abuse Prevention Month. We encourage all Arvada citizens to join in renewing our commitment to preventing child abuse and learning what we can do to promote the safety and well-being of children. Every responsible person will agree that even one abused child is too many. It's dated this fifth day of April, 2021, and signed by the mayor and members of council. So I purchased these two pinwheels, and we'll be purchasing more because I feel like we need a whole garden. 
So if you wouldn't mind just talking a little bit about Ralston House and we'll get this proclamation to you. Um, as you know, April is National Awareness Time to Use Prevention Month, and the pinwheel is a symbol of hope. So we'd like to get as many of those planted around the community as possible. Information is on our website at ralstonhouse.org/pinwheels. You can purchase a garden of 50 pinwheels and a yard sign to place either at your business, your school, or your religious organization, or even in your own front yard um, for $250. And our goal is to sell. 200 of these small gardens to get them out and around the Arvada community. So again, more information is on our website at rostonhouse.org slash pinwheels, and we greatly appreciate your support. Well, that deserves a round of applause. <laughs> Thank you very much. We will move now into public comment, and let me explain that public comment at our city council meetings is not a time of, of debate. It's a time that we uh, provide for our citizens to be able to make public comment. It's your time. Uh, we do not respond other than th there will be times where we'll direct our city staff to take some action or to look into something, but um, we will uh, listen politely to any public comment that is made. Uh, without making comment ourselves in, uh, so that it's your time to make your three-minute presentation to us. I'll begin with uh, Randy Mormon. Good evening, Mayor Williams and members of the Arvada City Council. Uh, my name is Randy Mormon, and I come to you tonight actually not to talk about recycling, but actually to discuss another topic that has been on my mind quite a lot lately. The events of March 22nd in Boulder had a jarring impact on me as it probably did on you as well. Um, now when I walk into a King Supers um, here in Arvada, I pause and I think about what happened and how it could happen anywhere at any time to any of us. I look at the cashiers and the stockers and the managers and the pharmacists and many other employees, they go about their, their daily work and I try to put myself in their shoes. These essential workers, um, including our teachers, our child care providers, our health care workers, and retail employees all have been working tirelessly over the past year to make sure we have these important services and supplies that we need as a community to get through the pandemic. And now the shooting in Boulder really adds additional stress, I think, to all of us. So I'm happy to hear that you are considering doing a, um, a city proclamation to express our gratitude to these essential workers. And I just encourage all of us as we're out and about in the community to pause, to stop, and to thank them when we see them and interact with them. So thank you for doing that. Thank you. We, uh, we will have a discussion on that. And about uh, bringing that proclamation forward. Uh, Tom Diostino. I want to thank you. This is the third time I've been f before the council. I want to thank you for the opportunity. Um, since I was out there holding a sign this evening, and um, we had a number of people that um, were very positive with the message that, that they want to be represented. And this is what it's all about, is, is getting a right to vote. When you take the right to vote away from us, you've taken the, the essence of, of a citizenship away. Uh, if, if any of you listened to the Tom Martino show that was on the radio about 10 days ago, there was a large number of people that called in. And Tom was very good. He, he, didn't, he didn't take sides, although he asked some salient questions about what was going on here. And, and it came down to the same question that everyone keeps asking is, why was there not a vote? And the answer from the city staff was, it was all fluff. It, it really had no substance to the answer. And, and really, we have to vote on matters this big by, by, the, by the people. Uh, and when you don't do that, you are taking away. And the biggest question that everyone asks is, what's next? If, you could, if the council could vote on something, uh, without the input 
without real input from the people, what's next? What, what are you going to vote on next? Are you going to increase the uh, minimum wage? Are you going to do something with Amazon? Okay, we all know about a lot of these things. So I, I'm, I'm hoping that, that they, they do the responsible thing, put it up for vote, okay? When a tweet comes out and it crashes the, the website for, for the city of Arvada, it's not because there's too many tweets. It's because the, the system was inferior and it should have been a more robust system. But of the people that did get through uh, that day on the tweets, 91%, 91% this is the calculation of the people that did not want to have their trash system changed. So I, I, I hope you consider uh, and, and I take a, a real responsible and I'd like to see the numbers when it comes out. When, they, when, the, when the dis come out, how many people are rejecting this system and taking the opt out feature? That is a, a, a piece of data that's going to be very important. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Kaylee Moffitt. Good evening. Hi. I haven't done this before, so I hope I'm okay. Um, I have a couple things that I'm just going to address quickly, but the reason I'm here is for the same thing as Randy Mormon. I was in King Supers when I looked on the news and saw what was happening in Boulder. Um, I looked up at my pharmacist, I looked at my grocery store clerk, and I realized that I know these people, that I see them every week. Um, they, have been, um, they have been coughed on and yelled at Costco workers, Walmart workers. They have gotten us through this pandemic and been harassed simply for just doing what their employer asks them to do, no matter their beliefs in the pandemic, and now this. And I realized that I would be devastated if I didn't see the gas station attendant at 7-Eleven who talks, we talk about music together. Um, so I'm hoping that you guys make a proclamation that all workers in Arvada to policemen, firemen, nurses, teachers, and our retail clerks, our gas station attendants, that everyone who got us through this pandemic, um, that we value them in this community. Um, and then I will like to hit on really quick that my husband and I do love the single payer option. I know that has been contentious, but we do, and so do our neighbors. Um, and in light of the retail workers and, and what they do for us as community, I would like to touch on affordable housing for them quickly. Um, they've been told over and over again that they don't deserve a living wage, and now they're being shot at. So they're working, some of them are working for very low wages and risking their lives. They got us through the pandemic. They're always patient and with a smile and willing to talk to you. I think the least we can do as Arvadans is understand their individual stories and and get them affordable housing, welcome them into our community, that they are as important to us as, as all everyone, that all the professions here matter in keeping this community safe and keeping it viable. So that's it, thank you. Thank you very much. Bruce Morrison. Hi. Um, Good evening. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to talk to you. Um, today, I, I, I'm actually here to commend the city uh, for um, making a decision on the single haul hauler trash. We are very excited to have fewer trucks uh, coming up our cul-de-sac, and to, it, for us, it's going to be quite a bit cheaper. Um, it's better for the environment, and you guys probably know particular staff more than I do, that uh, it will reduce wear on the roads and reduce taxes and increase recycling and um, all those good things. I, I'm not unsympathetic to people who, who want to uh, uh, vote on things, uh, who want their voice heard, uh, but if from, there, there were hundred, there, there, I can't remember the number, but there were a lot of people here when you voted to uh, approve the single hull of trash, and you did surveys, so I think you got a lot of public input. Um, and uh, this is a utility. This is not 
a major change in people's lives. It's not an increase in taxes. Um, so I, I commend you, commend you for, for, for doing that. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Joyce Richardson. Mr. Mayor and city council members, I want to thank you for allowing me the, a few minutes to share my thoughts and gratitude for the single hauler trash program that will begin in July. I'm here this evening to offer my wholehearted support for single hauler trash. I'm a member of the online forum of our Arvada neighbors and I've been saddened as, as well as truthfully irked by the portrayal of this program as being somehow shady and not within the purview of the city council to take this action. I do believe in representative government, even though I've not always agreed with the decisions made under this system, but on this particular issue, I do believe that the council worked hard to gather information and feedback and made a solid and informed decision. I have always believed in conservation and saving our planet and the recycling component of the trash contract is a big conversation, conservation step. I also firmly believe our city streets will benefit from less heavy trucks. Our trash dump will last longer than expected with the increase in recycling and my street I think will be quieter with less than seven trucks roaring down it during the week. I know some citizens feel that the opt-out fee is somehow a ripoff, but I also feel it's more than fair. I feel strongly that if you choose not to be part of the solution, you should have to pay. And since, our act, since those actions directly affect the cost to the city on street repair, it seems fair. Lastly, my family will be saving 50% of our monthly trash bill. And for that, I also thank you. I'm looking forward to this positive change in July, and thank you for listening. Thank you, ma'am. Mindy Moore. Good evening. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. Since residents don't comment at council workshops, I appreciate this time to speak about the last workshop regarding housing strategies. I'm speaking not only for myself, but also for Judy Douglas, Dr. Harriet Hall, and other Arvada residents. First, it appears that some on council feel that there needs to be more data. The city already paid to have a respected outside consultant root policy do a thorough evaluation of our data, our demographics, what people earn, what they pay in housing, what the housing stock is. From that evaluation, they showed that many of our residents are housing cost burdened, and not just renters, but also homeowners. The consultants also spoke to numerous residents. Root held several meetings with various stakeholders to get input. They also evaluated the responses from the 2019 community survey related to housing and affordability. So we have the data, much more than just the small Speak Up Arvada survey data showing that housing affordability is an issue. Other cities use this type of research to develop housing goals, a vision of what they want their city to look like, what type of housing diversity and affordability ranges. They then draft an action plan to achieve those goals. They evaluate what other comparable cities have done, what's been successful, look at what tools may work best here, and then they draft a plan and go out for community input. Then city leaders consider that, adopt what their city needs, and the plan is eventually implemented. Second, there are some who say that the free market should determine housing. If you build enough homes and apartments, then home prices and rents will go down. Or things are cyclical. During a recession, housing prices will drop. Well, I want to acknowledge all the good work on housing that our city has been doing over the years on, on several issues, but we have seen that the free market is not working to keep our housing affordable along the front range and in Arvada. We also heard that if a housing committee is formed to help with the strategy and action plan, it should include people with opposite opinions. We support the formation of a citizen's housing committee. However, does our golf advisory committee include people who disagree with the city's strategic plan for golf courses, 
or people who oppose golf courses or say, let the free market work and if people want to golf. Does our parks advisory committee include people who think we don't need to create and maintain parks, trails, and open spaces? Just let the developers build what they want and maintain it if they want to. No, you appoint residents with varying expertise and experience, but who recognize and support the city's visions and goals. Adequate and affordable housing. It's critical to keeping Arvada a city that welcomes residents of all ages, all income levels, and all demographics. Does our city council share that vision? We certainly hope so. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's all the sign-up sheets I have. Does anybody else wish to address city council at this time? Very good, thank you. Go ahead. Good evening, Councilmember. My name is Rachel Vandenberg, and I have been a resident in Arvada for nearly two years. Two weeks ago today, we lost 10 fellow Coloradans from violence by a man from our own community. Denise Stong, Nevin Stanisic, Ricky Olds, Chalona Bartkowiak, Terry Liker, Officer Eric Talley, Suzanne Fountain, Kevin Mahoney, Lynn Murray, and Jody Waters. These people lost lives to the hands of a man from our own community. He bought and obtained this gun within our city and used it to take away these 10 people from their family and friends. As a current resident of Arvada and a law student at the University of Colorado in Boulder, this tragedy hit very close to home for me. People, like the family I live with, should not fear when they go to the grocery store, or even to work, that they could be victims to such violent acts. I believe you as city council should stand in solidarity with Boulder City Council in their efforts to persuade the state legislature to act on gun control now. I believe you all should act and respond to this tragedy in the following ways. First, I was saddened that I could find no public statement from the Arvada City Council condemning the violent acts that took place on March 22nd at the King's Supers in Boulder. I believe the city council should address should issue a public statement condemning the acts that took place two weeks ago and recognize the tragedy that family and friends of victims are having to endure. Second, I believe you as council members should stand alongside, support, and work with Boulder City Council in their efforts for firearm regulation within the state. As a law student, I understand that even though Arvada is a home rule municipality, that the Colorado General Assembly has found firearm regulation to be a matter of state concern. This, along with the recent Boulder lawsuit, support the current status of that you cannot regulate firearms at the current time. However, the General Assembly is considering overruling that determination. And if that is the case, that would allow municipalities like our very own to put stricter firearm regulations in place than the state as a whole. In these situations, I urge you to begin preliminary conversations about how the city could regulate firearms to a greater extent in order to prevent further mass shootings in our community at large and within the state. For example, you could choose to prohibit all assault weapons. These weapons make shootings more lethal by causing greater damage and firing rounds more quickly. These weapons are clearly extremely dangerous. Likewise, you could choose to prohibit high capacity magazines. Um, these make gun violence incidences extremely dangerous and a threat to public safety. Thus, the Arvada City Council can and should regulate these firearms when possible. Lastly, you as council members should support, advocate for, and share mental health resources within the city. As we all have become aware, the pandemic and isolation has caused further mental health crises for many. The city council should make resources readily accessible to residents of the city. Thank you for your time. I look forward to seeing the work you all do in the future. Thank you very much. Then our next speaker. Good evening, mayor and members of the city council. My name is Matt Rivetta and I am a resident on West 66th between Pierce and Wadsworth. And today I'm just uh, getting on to bring attention and ask for follow through for some speed issues that we've been having in the corridor. Um, over two years ago, I had requested a speed study to be done and a traffic engineer at that time suggested that uh, there was a, a problem that would require some maybe spot enforcement or also speed awareness signs. Um, at that time, he also suggested that he would request budget for speed awareness signs. Since then, we have had no speed awareness signs permanently affixed. We did have a couple temporarily placed, and I want to thank publicly uh, Council uh, Person Simpson for coming to my property and also getting us uh, some of those uh, signs on a temporary basis. 
but we're looking for some behavior modification because we have a high walking co corridor with folks going to the high school, to the Seacrest Elementary. Um, we all have kids in the neighborhood that bike up and down the road. And by your own engineer's statement, uh, the, the percentage of people that go f over 40 miles per hour on the road is alarming. And uh, again, after talking to the area commander for Arvada PD, there was a suggestion that, that enforcement wasn't necessarily along this corridor, and I know it is costly, so again, I would like you to follow through with what was suggested and promised um, over two years ago. It would be a, a permanent speed awareness sign uh, budgeted for that area. Thank you. Very good. I'll pass that on to the city manager for follow-up, and I assume we have contact information so we can get back to this gentleman. Yes, Mr. Rivera and I exchanged many emails, I believe. Okay, very good. Thank you. Does that complete public comment? Very good. Thank you all for everybody's uh, courtesy in terms of their public comments uh, on all sides of issues. Next, I'll move on to the consent agenda. We have several items. The first is a resolution authorizing an agreement between Arvada and Badger uh, Meter Inc. for goods required for the automated metering infrastructure project. Next is a resolution approving the 2021 Arvada Visitor Center Strategic Plan. Next is a resolution authorizing the adoption of the City of Arvada 2019 Water Conservation Plan. Next is a resolution for approval of the corrected 2020 Community Development Block Grant funding budget from the original approved entitlement of 470, approximately $470,000 to the actual approved entitlement of $469,996. Next is a resolution approving the issuance of the Jefferson County Housing Authority uh, Foothills Regional Housing Multifamily Housing Revenue Bonds for Allison uh, Village uh, in one or more series in the aggregate principal amount not to exceed $19 million. These bonds solely for the purpose of satisfying Section 147F of the Internal Revenue Code of 1986. Next is a resolution accepting the granting of an easement by the City of Arvada to the Public Service Company of Colorado for the purpose of installing new electric service. And final on the consent agenda is a resolution authorizing a purchase and sale agreement between Arvada and Jefferson Center Metropolitan District Number 1. Mr. Marriott. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> I move that consent agenda items R21-052 through R21-058 all be approved. Motions for approval. Ms. Ford, how do you vote? Yes. Rest of council votes yes as well with David Jones being an excused absence. Thank you. Next we'll move on to resolutions. First resolution is a resolution authorizing the City of Arvada to continue its participation in an intergovernmental agreement supporting and funding the Rocky Mountain Greenway Trail project extension at Indiana Strait and Colorado Highway 128 in an amount not to exceed $243,000. Mr. Devin? Yes, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, this is a follow-up from the workshop of February the 8th uh, where we presented some information to the council regarding uh, the status of this project and the future actions that we would be bringing before you, which includes this resolution tonight for the intergovernmental agreement. Uh, this intergovernmental agreement is with four other organizations, uh, which includes the city of Boulder, Boulder County, city of Westminster, and Jefferson County um, for the crossings at Indiana Street and Colorado Highway 128. Uh, these crossings uh, are um, uh, integral to allowing the uh, project to proceed. Uh, we did, um, as you noted uh, in the report that's presented with the council agenda, there was the withdrawal of the city and county of Broomfield uh, from this agreement. Uh, however, uh, based on uh, the preliminary cost information and, and the way we've estimated the cost of the remaining partners, we believe that we will be able to continue to participate at the amount that's in the IGA that we previously uh, had estimated to you at an amount not to exceed $243,000. Uh, we are also working um, with uh, the Rocky Flats National Wildlife Refuge uh, in, in this area. Uh, I know that um, some follow-up comments from both Councilmember Ford and Councilmember Pfeiffer, uh, re which required some additional um, follow-up with, um, um, for example, in, in this case, uh, with the um, 
uh, Rocky uh, uh, Flats National Wildlife Refuge regarding wildlife crossings. That remains something that is on uh, the uh, priority list. And also, um, uh, as I understand it, there were some, answer, some questions that Councilmember Ford had regarding uh, the so previous soil study that, as I understand it, those, those questions have been answered. Um, so, uh, and, and if there are any questions that anyone from Council has, I know that uh, uh, Deputy Director of Vibrant Neighborhood and Communities, Vanessa Janes, is, is available to answer those questions if anyone has any. Uh, we are certainly recommending uh, approval of the resolution. We would like to join uh, with Jefferson County, uh, which approved the uh, resolution back in December, Westminster City Council, which approved the, the uh, IGA back on February the 22nd, uh, Boulder County is scheduled to take action on April 6th, and the City of Boulder is scheduled to take action on April 13th in order to help this um, uh, project move forward. Okay, open it up for City Council question or action. Mr. Marriott, you're first. We don't have any questions. I'll make a motion here. So I'll start by moving that R21-059, a resolution authorizing the City of Arvada to continue its participation in an intergovernmental agreement supporting the funding or supporting and funding the Rocky Mountain Greenway Trail Project Extension at Indiana Street and Colorado Highway 28, Colorado Highway 128, in an amount not to exceed $243,000 be approved. And I'll just make a quick comment, and, and that's um, I'm happy to see us continuing to participate in this and for the, uh, the local governments to cooperate with this. Uh, regardless of what your feelings are about Rocky Flats, the fact is there are parts of the wildlife refuge that are accessible and that there's a significant safety concern with people being able to cross these busy highways. Um, and this uh, grant, our participation in this grant, solves those very significant public safety concerns. Um, and so I'm all for it. Okay, all votes have been cast. Ms. Ford, how do you vote? Thank you. This uh, passes on a five to one with uh, Ms. Ford voting no, Williams, Pfeiffer, Marriott, Miller, and Simpson voting yes, and Mr. Jones uh, being excused. Thank you. Move on to resolution uh, 21060, authorizing an amendment to the intergovernmental agreement uh, by and between the city of Arvada and Denver Water. Mr. Devin. Yes, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, the purpose of this amendment to the intergovernmental agreement um, is to uh, adjust the date uh, for the commencement of construction uh, to July 15th, 2023. This is the uh, date that has been um, uh, presented to us by Denver Water based on their uh, uh, construction schedule uh, and uh, uh, the approval schedules uh, from Boulder County and other uh, parties at this particular point. Uh, based on this information, we anticipate receiving des deliveries uh, from the Gross Reservoir expansion by 2028. Um, at this time, uh, uh, the, uh, Denver Water informs us they're on a parallel path of proceeding with Boulder County permitting. Um, and uh, at this point, we don't see any um, uh, issues with uh, them being able to complete this project. So therefore, we're recommending approval of the, um, of the uh, in resolution and the amendment to the intergovernmental agreement. Okay, questions or action? Mr. Fiver? I'll, I'll take, I want to make a comment. You know, we have people coming in and telling us that we should put our trash up for a vote. But you know, this gross reservoir, is it what, an $80 million investment? About $110 million. Oh, $110 million now. Okay, so the citizens come in front of us and complain about the, the trash of them paying $19 but a $110 million investment, uh, we didn't take to the voters, but there's not a word said about the water and the gross reservoir impact. So just, it's just, I think people need to really understand which battles they choose um, because representative government is clearly here to do what um, I believe is the best for our communities, best for our citizenry, and to, to make as sound decisions as possible. I know my other council members probably did not skip, didn't think I was gonna say this about this particular one, but. Gross Reservoir is one, and Jefferson Parkway is the other one. So we just need to be very careful of what we wish for. Mr. Marriott. So I was going to make a motion if there are no questions, but I saw Ms. Simpson push her buttons. So. Nope, she pushed a different button. Oh, she did. Okay. So I'll go ahead and make a motion. I'm She's gonna... pushing my button. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thought that was my job. 
All right, so let me uh, make a motion. I move that R21-060, a resolution authorizing an amendment to the intergovernmental agreement number 500817, by and between the city of Arvada and Denver Water be approved. And I'd like to make a comment too. Um, my comment's a little different than Mr. Pfeiffer's, but my comment is, is about um, what a great job the city has done over the long term in participating in this project. That uh, this has obviously been ongoing for a number of years, decades even, um, and the city has consistently uh, participated and looked towards the future vision um, to, to be here. We are getting a great deal with this particular uh, project. We are getting uh, water storage for all our water rights that will lead clear to all the water we need for build out, which um, not a lot of cities can say that. Um, and uh, commend the staff for both um, having the foresight many years ago to enter into this agreement, but also ongoing to continue this agreement and continue getting it to where it is and you know my hope is that I will get to see uh, equipment working on and building that project in the very near future so uh, again thanks to the staff for making this happen yeah I've got uh, one comment I saw on today's paper that a uh, federal judge dismissed an environmental lawsuit uh, against this project uh, so that's just one more step in the right direction to get this completed. I vividly remember um, being on the negotiating team for the city of Arvada and, and getting to what Mr. Marriott is talking about in terms of a very favorable outcome with Denver Water. Um, I hope there comes a day in the future when some future mayor doesn't have to add into his state of the city speech to shower with a friend and that that can that can go away with Mayor Williams. So with that, uh, Ms. Ford, how do you vote? I vote yes. Thank you. And the rest of council votes yes as well with the exception of Mr. Jones who was an excused absence. Next we have a resolution authorizing an intergovernmental agreement by and between the city of Arvada and Apex Park and Recreation District to offset $431,000 of expenses related to the COVID-19 pandemic. Mr. Devon. Yes, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, the purpose of this agreement is to rescind one that you approved uh, on November 2nd, 2020. It was a sub-recipient agreement um, with Apex and replace it with this new intergovernmental agreement that will provide Apex with funding in the amount of $431,000 to offset costs uh, directly related with the COVID-19 pandemic. The reason why we're taking this action is that there was uh, some, um, uh, some uh, uh, disconnect uh, with the use of the funds, which required Apex to uh, ask us to uh, rescind the uh, original sub-recipient agreement and, and reissue this new agreement in order to allow them to use the funds to offset the costs that are directly related to the pandemic. And we were able to work with our partners uh, in, in Jefferson County uh, to do that um, as part of the Jefferson County allocation. Um, and that's, that agreement is before you tonight and we're asking for you to uh, approve the resolution and the intergovernmental agreement. So Mr. Devin, these were CARES fund dollars that, so these were dollars that flowed from the federal government well, they were originally CARES dollars, um, and we had to basically uh, cancel that sub-recipient agreement, um, and then um, we were able to find some additional funding, which is what the intergovernmental agreement is for, uh, in order to uh, uh, assist um, APEX with, this, with their uh, uh, challenges related to COVID. Very good. Mr. Marriott. Thank you. Um, I'll move that our... 21-061, a resolution authorizing an intergovernmental agreement by and between the City of Arvada and Apex Park and Recreation District to offset $431,000 of expenses related to the COVID-19 pandemic be approved. I make a quick comment about this as well. Um, again, I want to commend the city for uh, sharing these CARES Act dollars with some of our other local governments. Um, I know we did the same for the Arvada Center uh, as well as uh, as as Highland Hills Parks and Rec District, some of the other uh, uh, other um, special districts within our area, and I think it it's one of the reasons that makes this area so unique is the co cooperation we have between governmental agencies and, and within the region. Um, it's also why we will do better exiting this pandemic than other places may. So, uh, again, thanks to the city for doing that. Good, Ms. Ford, how do you vote? Yes. 
Explain the rest of the votes. The rest of the council votes yes as well, with the exception of Mr. Jones, who is excused. Passes six to zero. Next, we have a resolution authorizing an amendment to an intergovernmental agreement binding between the city of Arvada and the Colorado Department of Transportation for Wadsworth turn lanes. Mr. Devin. Yes, uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, this intergovernmental agreement uh, amends a previous agreement with uh, uh, CDOT in order to provide for partial reimbursement for construction cost overrun overruns on Wadsworth. Uh, this is the project uh, uh, right by the Arvada Center where there was additional turn lanes put on uh, Wadsworth from West 68th uh, Avenue to West 72nd Avenue. This is something that I think we've wanted to do for a long time. Um, I remember former council member Allard uh, used to ask me about these right hand turn lanes a lot. Uh, and so now we have them completed. Uh, there were some cost overruns associated with the location of utilities um, and some fiber. Uh, there was the need for a retaining wall and to revise a planned guardrail. And, and CDOT, uh, who's been a great partner with this project uh, and had actually done the original engineering uh, for this project, um, when we uh, discussed these cost overruns with them, they, they agreed that uh, they shared some responsibility because they were responsible for the original design. Um, and so uh, we are proposing with this uh, IGA uh, to uh, share the, co the cost overruns uh, with CDOT uh, under the previous negotiated cost sharing split of 84.25% uh, for CDOT and 15.75% uh, for Arvada. We think it's a very fair, reasonable solution, and that's why we're recommending approval of the amendment to the intergovernmental agreement. Ms. Simpson? Thank you. I'll reserve the motion if anyone doesn't have any questions. I see no other questions. You may proceed. Perfect. And since we're all making comments, I just want to commend the city for the great work in making sure this gets done and our partners at CDOT for, you know, working with us in such good faith. And also just the, uh, the streets uh, team that uh, put this together. I actually take this turn lane quite frequently because it's close to my house. And so it's absolutely beautiful and extremely well done. So congratulations to everyone involved in that work. So. I move that R21-062, a resolution authorizing an amendment to an intergovernmental agreement by and between the City of Arvada and the Colorado Department of Transportation for Wadsworth turn lanes be approved. Motions for approval. Ms. Ford, how do you vote? Well, I'm gonna vote yes on this and I'd just like to make a comment as you well bet. that I too use this lane quite frequently and I think it's a, a fabulous addition to our streets. Thank you. Rest Council shares your view and votes yes as well, with Mr. Jones being an excused absence to pass the six to zero. I'll move next to uh, resolution authorizing a grant agreement between the city of Arvada and Jefferson County for emergency rental assistance. Mr. Devin. Yes, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, uh, this intergovernmental agreement will allow us to enter into a fund funding, funding agreement with Jefferson County to accept the U.S. Department of Treasury Emergency Rental Assistance Funds in the amount of $499,000. This is part of the uh, congressional uh, uh, action uh, back at the end of December, which established the Emergency Rental Assistance Program, uh, 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 appropriated um, $23.785 billion, uh, of which Jefferson County received uh, $17.5 million of that. Uh, they're uh, uh, sharing uh, this award with uh, uh, the local governments within Jefferson County. Uh, $499,000 of that is wrapped into this intergovernmental agreement and will allow us to uh, continue to assist our neighbors with uh, uh, rental, um, um, you know, rental assistance uh, as needed. Uh, through the re remainder of this pandemic. Um, and uh, our housing team is uh, also working on uh, reviewing funding options to continue assisting residents that are in need of mortgage assistance. This one covers rental assistance. And because that is a need that has been expressed to us, we continue to um, support this, uh, uh, this agreement and recommend approval. Okay, open it up for city council questions or action. Mayor, I have a question. Yes. Um, Mr. Devin, I wanted to ask you a question on the uh, program administration. Um, at first, I looked at that with uh, some curiosity. Is 15 percent, uh, you know, it, it's 15 percent of the funds. Is that sort of standard? Uh, are, are we looking to hire someone on with that 75,000? 
we're not looking to hire a full-time person. We might need to uh, outsource some of the work from a contract standpoint. Um, and the 15% is, is standard. Um, if, whenever we can, we try not to use that much. Okay, thank you. Mr. Pfeiffer. If, if there's not any other questions, I'll go ahead and make the comment. You may proceed. Thank you. I move that resolution 21-063 resolution authorizing a grant agreement between the City of Arvada and Jefferson County for emergency rental system be approved. Motions for approval. Ms. Ford, how do you vote? I'll be voting yes. Thank you. Ms. Council is voting yes as well with the exception of Mr. Jones who is an excused absence. Next, I'll move on to a resolution authorizing an intergovernmental agreement by and between the City of Arvada and the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development for CARES Act funding in the amount of $276,525. Mr. Devin. Yes, Mr. Mayor, members of the Council, this is a little different CARES Act funding from the previous CARES Act funding. This is CARES Act funding that is associated with the Community Development Block Grant uh, coronavirus funds, uh, again, specifically uh, to assist people with um, um, uh, housing related issues um, and this these are directly directly allocated funds uh, to us from the de Department of Housing and Urban Development and again allows us to continue to assist uh, residents of Arvada that are facing um, uh, uh, housing instability and and um, uh, those kinds of things and at, at particular threat for maybe being evicted uh, so uh, we're um, recommending approval of this intergovernmental intergovernmental agreement as well Mr. Marion. I just have a question, Mr. Devon, on this. Does, does this uh, intergovernmental agreement or do these funds come with a prescription of exactly how they're used? In other words, will these be used to do more Section 8 vouchers or emergency rental assistance or some of both or even, even some other method that they be deployed? Well, they have to be used for housing. Uh, and right. they have to be used for emergency rental assistance. I don't know if they pre precisely prescribed Section 8 uh, or you know, housing vouchers versus, uh, versus other form of um, emergency rental assistance. Um, I don't know if we have anyone on the, on the uh, call uh, at the meeting right now that can um, answer that question, but we can certainly follow back up with you if, if you'd like to. Okay. Yeah, yeah I, I guess I wouldn't mind knowing that just to, to know from the city's standpoint, does this... Um, obligate us to um, kind of a, a, a different program for us to run or does this meld into some of the things we do already? Um, well, exactly uh, how we do this. If, from that standpoint, um, and, and our housing manager, Carrie Espinosa, is on the line, uh, so uh, I'll, I'll defer to our expert, Carrie. Hi, Carrie. Thank, thank you. Mr. You. Devin. Hi. Good evening, everyone. Um, these funds are going to be used for um, motel vouchers to assist um, the non-congregate sheltering model that we've been using throughout the county during COVID-19. Um, they will also be used um, for, excuse me, um, 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 I'm so sorry, not emergency rental assistance. Uh, they won't be used for Section 8 vouchers, um, but for the non-congregate sheltering to support the severe weather shelter network and their efforts throughout um, the season. So that's what the funds will be used for. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Pfeiffer. I'll go ahead and make the motion. I move that resolution 21-065, a resolution. Um, am I on the right one? Oh, I am 64. on the right one. It's 6-4, yep, sorry. I had to pause there for a minute because I scrolled too fast. I move that resolution 21-064 resolution authorizing an intergovernmental agreement by and between the City of Arvada and the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development for CARES Act funding in the amount of $276,525 be approved. Motions for approval. All votes are cast. Ms. Ford, how do you vote? Yes. The rest of the council votes yes as well with uh, Mr. Jones abstaining, or I'm sorry, being excused. And the final resolution tonight is a resolution permanently ratifying the city manager's temporary authorization of an intergovernmental agreement by and between the city of Arvada, 
the County of Jefferson and the City of Lakewood authorizing the Severe Weather Shelter Network to be a sub-recipient of Community Development Block Grant funds. Mr. Devon. Yes, Mr. Mayor, members of the Council, um, you may recall that we had an extremely cold February. Uh, and uh, as a result of that very, uh, very cold February, the um, uh, sheltering, the um, non congruent sheltering, uh, which is supported by the Severe Weather Shelter Network, uh, through the collaborative efforts of uh, the City of Arvada, City of Lakewood, and Jefferson County, um, was um, uh, basically uh, allocated more funding towards uh, severe, weather, severe weather shelter nights than what was um, uh, what, what we had really on hand. Uh, so as we approached the, uh, the end of February and beginning of March, uh, we received a request, an urgent request, to provide additional funding. Uh, this had to be uh, provided uh, through a intergovernmental agreement. The city attorney advised me, and I always pay attention to the city attorney's advice uh, regarding that matter. Um, but we also uh, determined that I would be able to authorize it on an emergency basis using the emergency th authority that I had at the time uh, to do that, uh, as long as we brought it back for ratification by the city council at a city council meeting. Uh, so, um, uh, I, and, and I, I, I really felt confident that the council would not want us to withhold funding, uh, which is why I felt comfortable with, um, uh, with, with using my emergency authority to approve the intergovernmental agreement, but uh, we also resolved to bring this back uh, in the form of a resolution and um, uh, the agreement that is with you, uh, before you tonight. Uh, so we're recommending approval of the agreement. Okay, uh, Ms. Miller. Like to reserve the motion, Mr. Marriott. Comments? Yeah, I, I do. I just have a question, uh, Mr. Devon, and, and I think I know the answer to this, but but I just want to be sure. Um, so the source of the funding for this is not our general fund or our parks fund or any of that stuff. It comes from community development block grant dollars given to us for this type of purpose. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Miller. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that R21-065, a resolution permanently ratifying the city manager's temporary authorization of an intergovernmental agreement by and between the city of Arvada, the county of Jefferson, and the city of Lakewood authorizing the Severe Weather Shelter Network to be a subrecipient of Community Development Block Grant Funds, CFDA number 14-218, be approved. Motions for approval. Ms. Ford? Yes. Rest of council present votes yes as well. Mr. Jones being an excused absence. Thank you. Next, uh, Ms. Miller, if you'll do our first readings. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that CB 21-013, an ordinance repealing and reenacting Article 6 of Chapter 38 Environment of the City of of the Arvada City Code and Council Bill 21-014, an ordinance authorizing an additional appropriation for fiscal year 2021, and Council Bill 21-015, an ordinance authorizing an intergovernmental agreement between the City of Arvada and the Jefferson County School District Number R1 relating to streets improvements to Ralston Road Public Project Number 18-ST-. 40 all be approved on first reading ordered published in full and public hearing to be set for April 19th 2021 at 6 15 p.m. Ms. Simpson thank you Ms. Ford how do you vote I vote yes thank you rest council votes yes as well with Mr. Jones uh, being an excused absence that passes six to zero We'll move on to appointments to boards and commissions. We'll just do this round robin. Uh, Ms. Ford, I'm going to start with you for the Arvada Arts and Cultural Commission. Okay, thank you, Mayor. I move to appoint Kim Wagner of the Arvada Arts and Culture Commission for an unexpired term ending April 30, 2024, and Ryan Eschenbach for an unexpired term ending April 30, 2022. And Ms. Ford, how do you vote on your motion? I vote yes. The rest of us do as well. That passes six to zero. Mr. Jones being an excused absence. Mr. Pfeiffer. Yes, I'll move to appoint uh, Stephanie Wells, Jonathan Dunkel, Chris Gartenman, Joseph Damgard, 
uh, Tracy Daly and Heather Carlson to the Arvada Festival Commission for a full three-year term ending April 30th, 2024, and Catherine Hollibird to the Arvada Festival Commission for an unexpired term ending April 30th, 2022. And I move to reappoint Michael Bozeman, Charles Jones, Eric Kamim, and Ethan Lutz for three-year term ending April 30th, 2024. I'll vote to cast, Ms. Ford. Yes. The other five of us present in council chambers vote yes as well, Mr. Jones being excused absence. Mr. Uh, Marriott. I move to reappoint Kevin Bonich to the Arvada Liquor Licensing Authority for a three-year term ending April 30th, 2024. Ms. Ford? I vote yes. The other uh, vote yes as well. Mr. Jones being excused absence, that passes six to zero. I will move to appoint Eli Ferret to the Arvada Urban Renewal Authority for a five-year term ending April 30 of 2026 and call upon Ms. Miller to ratify. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm Move that I move to ratify Mayor Williams' appointment of Eli Ferret to the Arvada Urban Renewal Authority for a five year term ending April 30th, 2026. Ms. Ford? I vote yes. And the rest of us do as well, with Mr. Jones being excused absence. That passes uh, six to zero. Ms. Simpson? Thank you. Um, so we're on Board of Adjustment. Yes. I move to reappoint Tom Alinchevich, apologies if I mispronounced that, and Richard Derryberry to the Board of Adjustment for three-year terms ending April 30th, 2024. Ms. Ford, how do you vote? I vote yes. The rest of us do as well with Mr. Jones being excused absence that passes six to zero. Ms. Ford, you have the Building Code Advisory Board. I move to reappoint Jim Johansson and John Blake Tomlinson to the Building Code Advisory Board for three-year terms ending April 30th, 2024, and I vote yes. Thank you. <laughs> the other five vote yes as well, so that passes unanimously with Mr. Jones being an excused absence. Mr. Fiver? Yes, I move to reappoint William Cheever to the Design Review Advisory Committee for a three-year term ending April 30th, 2024. Ms. Ford, how do you vote? I vote yes. As do the, the other five, with Mr. Jones being excused absence, that passes six to zero. Mr. Marriott? As I move to appoint Sharon Davis, Leif Carlson, and Pete Metropolis to the Golf Advisory Committee for three-year terms ending April 30th, 2024. Mr. Pfeiffer, if you'll, there you go. Ms. Ford, how do you vote? I vote yes. And the other five do as well, with Mr. Jones being excused absence, that passes six to zero. Ms. Miller? Thank you, Your Honor. I move to appoint Keisha Givner to the Human Services Advisory Committee for a three-year term ending April 30th, 2024. I, do you want me to do the second one as well? Yes. I move to reappoint Heather Arnold Renneker and Robert Slay for a three-year term ending April 30th, 2024. Five of us have voted yes. Ms. Ford, how do you vote? <laughs> I vote yes. <laughs> that passes six to zero. <laughs> Ms. Simpson, you have the Park Advisory All Committee. All right. I move to appoint Jackie Marquis to the Park Advisory Committee for a three-year term ending April 30th, 2024, and Travis Torline to the Park Advisory Committee for an unexpired term ending April 30th, 2023. I move to reappoint Abby McNeil, Michael Miller, Stacy Parcell, and Jerry Sampson for three-year terms ending April 30th, 2024. Ms. Ford, how do you vote? Yes. As do the other five present, Mr. Jones being excused absence, that passes six to zero. Ms. Ford, you've got the Planning Commission. I move to appoint Tim Knapp to the Planning Commission for a four-year term ending April 30, 2025. I move to reappoint Douglas McGee for a four-year term ending April 30, 2025. And I vote yes on that. Thank you. 
And we have five yes votes in chambers. Uh, Mr. Jones being an excused absence, that passes six to zero. Mr. Fiver. Yes, I move to appoint uh, Jasmina uh, Petrovic and Kia Ruse to the Sustainability Advisory Committee for a three-year term ending April 30, 2024, and Laurel uh, Maitri to the Sustainable Sustainability Advisory Committee for an unexpired term ending April 30, 2023. And I move to reappoint Keegan Conley, Keith Emery, uh, Christina Gonzalez uh, Avram, and Harriet Hall for a three year term ending April 30th, 2024. Ms. Ford, how do you vote? I vote yes. Five in chambers vote yes as well. Mr. Jones being excused absence, that passes six to zero. Mr. Marriott. So I'll move to appoint Jesse Dubin to the Transportation Committee for a three-year term ending April 30th, 2024. And I also move to reappoint Jadwiga Brown for a three-year term ending April 30th, 2024. Ms. Ford, how do you vote? I vote yes. That was our last vote. Let me, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I bet we'll get the same outcome, but we'll vote again. Maybe. There we go. Okay, we have now voted correctly with five in chambers voting yes in addition to Ms. Ford. So I pass the six to zero, Mr. Jones being excused absence. Now I will move to appoint Jim Arndt to the Transportation Committee for a three year term ending April 30th, 2024. And I'll move to ratify Mayor Williams' appointment of Jim Arndt to the Transportation Committee for a three-year term ending April 30th, 2024. Way to go, Mr. Marriott. You just stepped on Ms. Miller's motion, but that's okay. The motion's been made. <laughs> I, thought I, I thought I had the whole committee, not just part of it. It's okay. Ms. Ford, how do you vote? I vote yes. That passes six to zero. Um, with Mr. Jones being an excused absence. Ms. Miller, you now get to address the last one. Oh, wait a minute. We already had that. Did you already do Jadwig? Okay. So that completes the appointments. Let me just comment. We are blessed in Arvada to have so many citizens who volunteer to serve. And these are, for the most part, purely volunteer positions. There's no compensation other than the sense of giving back to your community. And, um, you know, I talked to other mayors and I know fellow council members talk to fellow council members that, you know, it's really an exception, the number of people. We had literally had a book, Yay Thick, um, which was almost as heavy as Ms. Miller is, to, uh, <laughs> to, to go through and, and council spent a lot of time. We've got a very efficient way for, in which we conduct these interviews. Uh, this year it was done primarily by Zoom. Uh, but it went well, and we are, again, the, the talent level of our folks is uh, through the roof. So uh, we're very pleased with uh, the people who we selected, uh, and those who we didn't select, we would urge them to continue to apply, and we'll sure try to get you plugged in at some point somewhere. So with that, we'll move on to our public hearings, and I will open the public hearings on the ratification and approval of CP 2021-0001, a resolution by the Planning Commission for the City of Arvada, Colorado, to amend the 2014 Arvada Comprehensive Plan land use designation pertaining to Lazy Susan from Jefferson County R1 residential zoning to RN 12.5 residential neighborhood zoning with an amendment to the suburban residential located at 16770 and 16790 West 63rd Place. Same time we'll be considering R21066, a resolution setting for certain findings of fact and conclusions as to the annexation of certain land into the city of Arvada, Colorado. Lazy Susan 16770 and 16790 West 63rd Place. We'll also consider Council Bill 21009, an ordinance annexing certain land into the city of Arvada, Lazy Susan 16770 and 16790, West 63rd Place. And finally, we'll consider Council Bill 21010, an ordinance rezoning certain land within the city of Arvada, Lazy Susan 
from Jefferson County R1 residential to RN 12.5 residential neighborhood, 1.5 dwelling units per acre, and amending the official zoning maps of the city of Arvada, Colorado, generally located at 16770 and 16790 West 63rd Place. Mr. Devin. Yes, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, we have planning manager Rob Smetana who will introduce and, and present these items. Thank you. Thank you, uh, good evening. Uh, as you mentioned, the applicant is requesting ratification of the comp plan, comprehensive plan amendment and approval of annexation and rezoning. The site is currently occupied by a single family home and one outbuilding and consists of two platted lots with a uh, measuring approximately 1.15 acres. Access to both of the lots would be provided from West 63rd place. Uh, the comprehensive plan amendment is necessary to align the plan with the existing size of the lots proposed for annexation, as well as with other lots located within the same subdivision. The Planning Commission unanimously approved the comprehensive plan amendment and recommended approval of the rezoning uh, of the annexation and rezoning request at their February 16th meeting. We have received the signed posting log and mailing affidavit and they are in order. The applicant is in attendance uh, as well as uh, Jeremiah Bebo, uh, staff planner, who's available for any questions from you. Thank you. Very good, the posting log and the mailing affidavit will be made part of the record. Anyone who's gonna testify on this matter, do we have somebody on Zoom or how are we for the applicant? Is the applicant present on Zoom? Yes, I am. Okay. Can you raise your right hand and swear or affirm that the testimony you're going to give in these proceedings will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. You may proceed. Thank you. We're not seeing you. Is your camera on? Or do you... There we go. There we go. Very good. Okay. Um, I'm not in control of the slides. Do you... I'll just go through the slides if, if that's okay. We'll make sure they get advanced. Okay. You ready to move to the next one? Yes, please. This gives a better idea of lot 18 and 19. It sits right along 64th Avenue. Um, the existing house is on lot 18. It is hooked to city water already. Um, again, we're just requesting the rezoning to RN 12.5. It's consistent with the other properties in the surrounding area. We can move to the next slide. Uh, this just shows a little better. Uh, this 50 foot um, exception is owned by Arvada for their utilities. And here you can see the existing one story frame home with the detached one car garage and a small shed in the back. Lot 19, you can see, is currently vacant. There is one small shed on the very back property line, but that is it. I'm um, just looking to hook this to city sewer, city water. Um, next slide, please. This is a good aerial showing the property on 64th Avenue. It has great access right off of 63rd place. There is an existing gate already that accesses lot 19. And it just kind of shows it is consistent with the surrounding neighborhood. And we can just go to the next slide, which is um, just going to be zoomed in, showing the intersections and the lots. And then I just have one final slide. Annexation slash rezoning and the comprehensive plan conforms with this project aligns with the community and the economic development. Uh, and this again just kind of shows that zoomed in the two parcels. And that's really um, that's the last slide. Very good. Do we have any member of the public that wishes to address city council on this matter? Okay, I will close the public comment portion. Since there was no additional public comment or questions, there's no need for rebuttal. I'll open it up for city council questions or action. 
Mr. Pfeiffer. Well, I was hoping to hear a little bit more. Is, am I missing the, what's the project scope exactly? You're, I mean, you're just annexing in and building houses on it? Uh, yes, so I'm just annexing in to hook the existing house on lot 18 to city sewer, because currently it's on a Only water. septic system. Yeah, currently it's on city water, but um, we'd like to go to city sewer. And then on lot 19, um, we're just looking to build one single family resident home and hook that to city water and city sewer. I guess the question I have maybe for the, the Arvada team is you know, why the zoning, why not the estate zoning or something else that they're just putting one house per acre or whatever the case is here? Why did we pick 12.5 houses per acre? So the, the uh, uh, Councilman Pfeiffer, um, the 12.5 references the minimum lot sizes. So, okay. um, so the zoning requested is residential neighborhood minimum lot size of 12,500. Uh, which is consistent with um, some of the other lots in this neighborhood that have annexed in. Um, this neighborhood does obtain, uh, and many of the lots are still within unincorporated Jefferson County, um, and we do have existing um, out-of-city out utility agreements with um, most of these lots for their water service. Um, however, most of them are on um, septic systems still. So um, this applicant is requesting um, sanitary sewer service for um, the existing home, um, as well as for the new home. Um, and that was kind of the, the trigger for the annexation request. Okay, and thank you for reminding me we don't do units per acre anymore. I kind of forgot that we kind of went away from that. So these, on uh, what's the total acreage of, of these two lots? I, think I didn't catch that. It is, so the total annexation request is 1.15 acres and that'll include there's a little accepted portion um, along west um, 64th that uh, was dedicated to the city um, a while back for uh, right-of-way purposes so you'll see that there's a city uh, city sidewalk so that goes through that area um, and so we just included that in the annexation as we typically would and so with this with this change uh, with 12,500 per um, you said how many houses can they build on this? It's quite a few actually still. If they just did one, but they could do more, right? Without I think um, on that larger lot, the lot 19, um, you know, and whether or not it was in the city or in the county, technically the, the, the zoning would allow for, um, for another subdivision of just one more lot, um, which like I said, they, they could do. Um, there's other things that come into play, you know, fire is gonna need access um, if they do a lot in the rear um, they have to have a minimum width for utilities as well. Uh, but I think the maximum that they could do just based on this lot size is, is potentially one more. Okay. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Ms. Simpson? Um, yes, I'll make the motion. You may proceed. Okay. I move that CP 2021-001, a resolution by the Planning Commission for the City of Arvada, Colorado, to amend the 2014 Arvada Comprehensive Planned Use Designation pertaining to Lazy Susan from Jefferson County R-1 Residential Zoning to RN-12.5 Residential Neighborhood Zoning with an amendment to suburban residential located at 16770 and 16790 West 63rd Place be ratified and approved. This motion is based on the facts and uh, findings of facts adopted by the Planning Commission. Motions uh, for approval of the ratification and approval of the resolution of the Planning Commission. Ms. Ford, how do you vote? I vote yes. The other five of us present in chambers vote yes as well. Mr. Jones being excused absence, that passes six to zero. Ms. Simpson? When you take one, you get to take them all. No problem. <laughs> We're just keeping you from a basketball game. It's no yes. problem. Uh, all right, I got them all, and I'm going to read fast, y'all, because it's tip-off time. I move that R21-066, a resolution setting forth certain findings of fact and conclusions as to the annexation of certain land into the city of Arvada, Colorado, Lazy Susan, 16770 and 16790, West 63rd Place, be approved. Read almost as fast as Ms. Miller reads. Ms. Ford, how do you vote? I, I vote yes. All we've, right. We've got five additional yes votes here in chambers. Passed six to zero. Mr. Jones being excused absence. All right. 
Next one, I move that CB 21-009, an ordinance annexing certain land into the city of Arvada, Lazy Susan, 16770 and 16790, West 63rd place, be approved. Uh, numbered 4756, an order published in title only. Ms. Ford, how do you vote? I vote yes. There's five vote yes votes in chambers. It passes six to zero. Mr. Jones being excused absence. Last one. All right. I move that CB 21-010, an ordinance rezoning certain land within the city of Arvada, Lazy Susan, from Jefferson County R-1 residential to RN 12.5 residential neighborhood 1.5 DU slash AC and amending the official zoning maps of the city of Arvada, Colorado, generally located at 16770 and 16790 West 63rd place, be approved. On final reading, numbered 4757 and ordered published by title only. Motions for approval. Votes in chambers are all yes. Ms. Ford, how do you vote? I vote yes. Passage unanimously with Mr. Jones being excused. Um, next we're gonna have, I'm gonna open the public hearing on Council Bill 21011, an ordinance vacating a tract of land dedicated as right of way for West 52nd Place, west of Carr Street, City of Arvada, City of, County of Jefferson, State of Colorado. Mr. Marriott has a motion he wishes to make. Yeah, thank you, Your Honor. Um, so I am own adjoining two adjoining properties to uh, this subject property. So for that reason, I would like to ask my fellow council members to recuse me from this uh, item, and I'd like to leave the council chambers. I need a motion to excuse Ms. Simpson. Thank you. I move to excuse Council Member Marriott from vote, uh, from voting on this issue, and also to allow him to leave the council chambers. Okay. If people will vote on that motion. Ms. Ford, how do you vote? I vote yes. And uh, the other four of us have voted, Mr. Marriott, out of council chambers as well. Okay, okay. Very good. Um, with that, Mr. Devon. Yes, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, again, we'll have Planning Manager Rob Smetana introduce this item. Thank you again. Uh, as mentioned, the applicant is requesting vacation of a portion of West 52nd, uh, the 52nd place right of way. Uh, the size of the requested vacation area is approximately 3,560 square feet, which is on the south side of the street. Uh, the street is currently uh, fully constructed and there's no further widening anticipated. And there would be no impact on the existing improvements uh, if the right of way were to be vacated. The Planning Commission unanimously recommended approval of the vacation at their February 16th meeting. We have received the signed posting log and mailing affidavit and they are in order. Uh, we do have the applicant here as well as Cheryl Drake, one of our staff planners. Uh, she is available for questions as well. Thank you. Thank you. The posting log and mailing affidavit will be made part of the record. Uh, representative uh, for the applicant, if you'll raise your right hand. Swear or affirm the testimony you have given these proceedings will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes. You may proceed. All right. If you can go to the next slide really quick. Uh, my name is Corey Whitaker. Um, I lead our real estate team at Habitat for Humanity of Metro Denver. Uh, just to give you a quick background on this project, um, currently Habitat for Humanity is under contract on this property with the Arvada Housing Authority uh, to develop for sale affordable homes um, in Arvada. We are very excited to do that. And I was very excited to hear a lot of talk about affordable housing tonight um, at the meeting. Um, and so we have teamed up with um, a design team to do that. Uh, so we have a representative from Radian here tonight. Uh, we also have our, our civil engineer um, here, but I think in the interest of time, I might just walk through this myself and steal the thunder from them. Uh, so if you could go to the next slide. Uh, this is the property. Uh, so you can see it's located at the intersection of 52nd and 52nd place and Carr Street. Um, the vacated or the request for the, uh, the right of way is at that northern portion of the property. Uh, so the property is zoned R24, um, it's about 1.132 acres, um, and we're really requesting just um, about 3,500 acre or 3,500 square feet um, be added to that property. Next slide, please. 
and this is a little bit more zoomed in. Um, and so really the, the uh, request is so that we can um, kind of make this part of our property um, and uh, really match the, the typical street section in this area. You can see across the street, the property line um, is much closer to the sidewalk. Um, and that is very typical. And so we want to make sure that these homeowners own this property, they maintain this property, um, and it made sense to vacate it um, into the, the property so that it, it, it was more like that. Uh, next slide, please. Um, and then in terms of the, uh, the criteria for the vacation, uh, so the vacation requested does not disturb or change the street at 52nd place. Um, and ex the and uh, the property line exists behind the curb and gutter, leaving the existing sidewalk to remain. Uh, the vacation won't create any landlocked property, uh, and we believe the land uh, vacated is not necessarily necessary for the public use and convenience. The vacation does not restrict access to any lot, tract, or parcel. Um, and then the vacation will not reduce the quality of the public services um, or the provisions necessary for emergency services. Um, you know, there's no utilities within that that vacation currently. Uh, so we, we believe it's consistent um, and would appreciate your vote for approval. Okay, do we have any additional testimony on this matter from anybody? We do not. I'll close the public testimony portion. Ms. Miller has reserved the motion. Uh, Ms. Simpson, do you have any questions? Okay. Uh, Ms. Miller, you may make the motion. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that Council Bill 21-011, an ordinance vacating a tract of land dedicated as right-of-way for West 52nd Place, West of Carr Street, City of Arvada, County of Jefferson, State of Colorado, be approved on final reading number 4758 and ordered published by title only. Motions for approval. All votes are cast. Ms. Ford, how do you vote? I vote yes. Williams, Pfeiffer, Miller, and Simpson vote yes. Mr. Marriott uh, is recused. Mr. Jones is, abs is uh, uh, excused absence. So this passes five to zero. Congratulations. I look forward to uh, when you bring the Metro mayors out to do some construction work on this project. We'll be happy to have you. Thank you so much. We can have Mr. Marriott. Do we have to vote to let him sit in again? I guess not. I guess it's just sort of automatic. I'm glad we're providing some humor for our team tonight. Mr. Mayor, if we were going to do that, I could have just left because I'm sure I would not get voted back. <laughs> I would have voted you back, Councilmember Marriott. Next, I'll uh, open the public hearing on Council Bill 21012, an ordinance vacating a public access easement located within Lot 4B, Block 1, Candelas Commercial, City of Arvada, County of Jefferson, State of Colorado. Mr. Devin? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, and, and this is related also to the following item. I don't okay, know. Okay, so we can, we'll can. we also consider then the major modifications for Wet Rabbit Car Wash, generally located at 9159 Kendrick Street. Yes. And again, we'll have planning manager Rob Smetana introduce this item. Thank you. Uh, one last time this evening. Uh, as you mentioned, the applicant is requesting vacation of a public access easement, as well as three major modifications from land development code requirements to allow for the development of a car wash on the subject property. The site is currently vacant and approximately one and a half acres in size. Uh, there is a, the proposal is for a approximately 5,900 square foot enclosed tunnel car wash. Uh, the public access easement would be vacated, but then reestablished at a slightly different location on the property. The three major modifications would allow for the car wash bay doors to face a public street, uh, allow the equipment associated with the vacuum stations to be located outside the main building, and allow for the equipment enclosure to be taller than that allowed by the land development code. The planning commission unanimously recommended approval of the public access easement vacation and the major modifications at their March 16th meeting. We have received the sign uh, posting log of mailing affidavit and they are in order. The applicant is in attendance. And we also have uh, planner Carol Ibanez uh, to answer any questions you may have. 
Thank you. Very good. The posting log and mailing affidavit will be made part of the record. Uh, if the applicant will raise their right hand, swear or affirm the testimony you'll give in these proceedings will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Very good. If you'll state your name and make your presentation. Thank you, Council Members. My name is Craig Kahn with the Kahn Architectural Group. Uh, we're the architects for the Wet Rabbit Express Car Wash, and we are here to request approval of, of the same. Um, I will uh, make this as brief as I can uh, with the help of the person manning the slides. Next slide, please. Uh, the site is located on the northeast corner of Candela's Parkway and West 91st Place. Next slide. This is an aerial shot giving you a, a better view. It's next to the King Supers Center on the corner of Candela's and Indiana Street. It is a vacant lot. It will be subdivided, or it is subdivided, into two lots. We will be developing the car wash on the western side of it along Kendrick Street, which runs along the west side of the property you see here. Next slide. This is again is a, a site plan showing the two lots in question with West 91st plate running to the south, Kendrick to the west. Next slide. This site plan shows the car wash. It is a single tunnel automatic uh, car wash with our patrons uh, queuing along uh, the, the entry drive uh, on the west side of the building. S access to the site will be by an existing curb cut directly opposite, uh, or currently in existence by the King Supers. Uh, we will be installing a ring road around the two lots uh, to be developed. And uh, with the other entrance along Kendrick Street uh, that you see in the northwest corner there. Uh, next slide, please. Here's the car wash. Next slide. That is the vacuum, the separate vacuum and trash station. Next slide. And the ring road going around the site to provide services as well as a utility loop uh, around the development. Next slide. Uh, this is an aerial showing the car wash site. Uh, cars will queue along again along the west side, uh, along Kendrick. The tunnel runs north-south. Uh, the tunnel entrance is on the south side, facing uh, West 91st Place. The cars will go through the tunnel, occupied by their owners, and emerge on the north side, where they will go to the parking area on the east side of the building, on the right side, uh, where the vacuum stations will be. Next slide. This is a shot from West 91st, an aerial from West 91st, we are proposing a large 150 foot long, four foot high berm along West 91st. This is to block the visual access to the south facing tunnel entrance that you see uh, and beyond. Uh, next slide. The building elevation and uh, how we've taken great care into modifying, mixing the uh, materials on the buildings, the colors, projections, and tower forms to break up the mass of the building and uh, to create some very strong shadow lines and have the building hug the ground. Next slide. Uh, this is an example of the trash enclosure walls uh, that will be surrounding the trash enclosure and the vacuum station. Next slide. Uh, this is a rendering from the corner of West 91st and Kendrick showing uh, the amount of landscaping we're proposing along West 91st Street and Kendrick uh, to help effectively screen uh, the tunnel entrance. Next slide. This is along Kendrick. Um, you can see the building is actually four feet below Kendrick. Uh, and this is where the cars will be queuing, uh, hopefully when business is good, uh, to run through the car wash. Next slide. Uh, this is the east side of the building. You can see the amount of detail on the building to, uh, again, to break the building into a much more human scale building along with natural materials and stone and a combination of stucco. Next slide. Uh, again, this is the aerial again. You can pass this one. Next, next slide, please. I realize it was in there. This is an actual car view from West 91st Place looking towards that south entrance of the tunnel. You can see by the use of the four foot high berm and the landscaping, uh, the building is almost uh, not visible. Next slide. There's the berm. Next slide. That'll be the tunnel entrance there. Next slide. Next slide. Again, just reinforcing the length of the berm all along the uh, southern 
uh, trajectory of the, of the lot itself. Next slide. That's the conclusion. Uh, as Mr. Smantana said, uh, we are asking for three major modifications. One, uh, to allow the single tunnel entrance um, to face south. Uh, contrary to the rending you saw, the elevations were actually more correct. It's actually a glass fronted door, so it'll appear more as a storefront if you happen to be able to see it. Uh, that's for that major modification. The other modification is that uh, for car washes, um, all uh, vacuum equipment or all the equipment is supposed to be inside the building. We are asking for the modification to allow us to put the vacuums outside, but completely shielded by a 10 foot four inch high solid masonry wall. The purpose of this request is that the vacuum equipment simply works better the closer it is to the vacuum stations. Uh, the last request is the modification from a six foot high wall to a 10 foot four high wall to completely shield the same vacuum stations. Um, we are very excited to come to Arvada. We feel this is a very, very useful and necessary um, uh, service to provide to the citizens to maintain their vehicles. And uh, the most important part is that automatic car washes will use approximately one eighth the amount of water that if you were to wash your car in the driveway. And uh, with all those reasons, we hope for a, uh, an approval this evening. And I welcome to take any questions you have. Very good. Uh, is there any other member of the public that wishes to address city council on this matter? Okay, I'll close the public uh, testimony portion, Ms. Miller. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Khan, great presentation. Beautiful car wash. I mean, seriously, this is a beautiful car wash. I, 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 um, I like it. I just have one quick question in the comments of the Planning Commission, and I don't see it resolved, so I just wonder if you could speak to it a little bit. They were asking for the ring road to be 25 feet continuous, and it looks here like 24, but I wasn't sure why the 25 feet and if, if you would speak to that. Uh, it was a suggestion at the time of planning commissioner, so we thought um, it 24 feet is a standard width for a, the two lane road, and uh, that's why we have proposed it. Uh, we are not, uh, as we stated, I believe in the planning commission notes, uh, if, if the council feels strongly about widening it to 25 feet, we see no reason as to uh, deny that request. Um, it's just a little bit more than standard. Thank you. Perhaps mm -hmm. somebody from our team could indicate 24 or 25. So for the most part, um, there is a uh, uh, area there that is a sliver of, um, with when we get the final site plan design, but the intent is 24. Um, again, to there are areas where it gets narrow, and so it's it'd be difficult to get the 25, but that's something that we can try to um, accommodate. Um, we do still have the site plan um, in process and that that could change, but then we'll have to get our staff to kind of also review and make sure that we're all on the same page in terms of allowing for that to um, add that extra foot. So, and whether they could do it all. So that's something we could look at at the site plan. Thank you. Yeah, I don't feel strongly about it. I was just wondering what the conversation around it and why they were requesting that. That's all. So it's not something I, think I they feel were just trying about. to make it all consistent across, but, I, but because of the way the road kind of narrows, there's like some areas that will just you know be a little sliver to short of getting that whole 25 um, area, uh, feet area for that. Thank you. Mr. Marriott. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Khan. I have a quick question for you, and that's I can see on the site plan where the trash and vacuum equipment enclosure is, um, but where is the vacuum service actually delivered? Is that up by the building, or, or do cars queue up there to use the vacuum equipment? How does that, how does that work? They're actually at the head end of the parking stalls that you see on the east side of the building. Unfortunately, they are not rendered, um, but if uh, on the site plan documents themselves, uh, each parking stall shares a stanchion that houses two hoses, uh, one for each parking stall on either okay. side. So they're, they're connected underground um, to, to the tubes, and the cars simply pull up, and uh, the vacuums are available for their use. Right, okay. So the enclosure is just really for the equipment for it, but that's not the spot that the vacuuming would happen or anything like that. It, it happens elsewhere. That is correct. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, Mr. Pfeiffer. If there's not any other questions, I'll go ahead and make the motion. You may proceed. Uh, all right. If I get to the right page, I move that Council Bill 21-012, uh, an ordinance uh, vacating a public access easement located within Lot 4B, Block 1, Candela's Commercial, City of Arvada, County of Jefferson, State of Colorado, be approved on final reading. Number 4759 and ordered published by title only. Motions for approval. Ms. Ford, how do you vote? I vote yes. And there are five votes in council chambers with Mr. Jones being excused absence. That passes six to zero. I also move that uh, DA 2020-0122 uh, major modifications for wet rabbit car wash generally located at 9159 Kendrick Street be approved. This motion is based on the finding of fact adopted by the Planning Commission. Motions for approval. Ms. Ford? I vote yes on this and I'd like to just uh, add, uh, Mr. Kahn, I also think that this uh, design, this site plan is very attractive. So I wanted to thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. Five yes votes in council chambers as well. That passes six to zero. Mr. Jones being excused absence. That completes our public hearings for tonight. Do we have anybody signed up for public comment? Stephen Jones. Very good. City council reports, if any. Ms. Simpson. Yes, uh, first I just wanted to commend the city manager and Mr. Archer and everyone for uh, finding the funds for the uh, visitor center. I think that's going to be really important, particularly with the reopening of the economy. And uh, for anyone watching at home, you may see me in green and gold tonight. Baylor, class of 2005, we're playing for the national title tonight. Go Bears! And uh, for and Gonzaga, a great team, fantastic team, and just hoping every young man on the court tonight has a lot of fun, a great game, and no injuries. Well said, Mr. Fiver. So we had a lot of discussions tonight about uh, affordable housing, and we talked about you know funding that associated to housing and homelessness and stuff. And I just wanted to, uh, I want to thank the the people that came and spoke tonight about it because you know over the last few weeks and and. For those that, that know me, my oldest son's 24. He works in mental health. Uh, he's going for his master's, and he's going to be excited when he gets his master of making 22 to $24 an hour as a mental health worker. Right now, without his master's, he makes about 18 to $19 an hour. So we've been looking for housing for him. And when you start looking at people that are trying to contribute to our community in the mental um, health fields, we just don't pay enough. And when you talk about affordable housing, we just can't find him a place to live. And he doesn't want, well, let's just be clear. We don't want him to move back necessarily. <laughs> but we are willing to pay to supplement his, his not come home fees. Um, but when you look at that, you know, on a serious note, my wife and I spent the last few weeks trying to find a place. And Arvada is expensive. You can go to Wheat Ridge, save 20%. You can go to Lakewood and maybe save some more. Closer you get to Sheridan, you save some more. But Arvada, you know, Broomfield, Bold, absolutely, Boulder is not affordable. So, you know, how liberal the city is, it's not, a, it's not an affordable city. Um, but Arvada is just not affordable. And I know that there's been a lot of recent movement, and I appreciate the council, I appreciate the team, the staff, and trying to bring things forward and we need to continue doing that because you know I'm living it right now and he loves what he does he doesn't want to change what he does he loves working with kids with autism and and he wants to continue doing that and you know but it's going to get to a point where he's going to have to either leave the field and not contribute back to the mental uh, health uh, arena uh, to find a different job to pay him more which that would be a detriment to our communities or we need to step up as a community and start finding places that these folks like my son and uh, people that are getting that are young or trying to get into a field that doesn't pay well maybe like teachers and find find a place that they can live in a very comfortable safe community like Arvada and they should be part of our community part of the fabric and the thread of it so I just I just you know I didn't bring it all up during the other conversations but you know there's quite a few conversations tonight that caught a lot of motion for me tonight and this is one that we want to continue, I would encourage that we continue having those conversations and we continue uh, pushing forward and hopefully continue to, to make progress here, you know. Um, 
I've been here 10 years and I know the mayor has been here 20 years and, and I think the mayor has kids that probably fall in those suits as well. Um, and, and we're making progress, it's just not fast enough, I think. And I think COVID kind of set us back as well. So I just encourage you to keep going, keep pushing, keep persevering. And I look forward to, to good news when we get closer to real opportunities to make affordable housing real. So thank you. Yeah, actually, I've been here 42 oh. years, but that's okay. That's okay. I, didn't, I didn't need you, but go that's, for it. That's if you okay. Want. Um, a couple of things. The, um, we did have a, a public comment tonight indicating that she had not seen any public statement with regard to the Boulder shooting incident. I issued a statement both to the city team and also to the public that um, I know our team pushed out. Uh, in, in. So we did make a public statement with regard to that tragedy. Uh, also, I've been in direct contact with the mayor of um, Boulder on several occasions relating to this, and he's been very appreciative of Arvada's involvement from our police department, our investigators, and the assistance we provided on the day of the tragedy and since that time. So we have been very engaged on this uh, very tragic incident and, um, and the aftermath, and, and um, uh, we'll have a discussion as a council in terms of some sort of proclamation to, uh, to do that, as people, everybody's in support of doing that. Okay with that? Yes, so go ahead and get that proclamation put together and we'll uh, uh, address that because certainly the frontline people on all fronts who have helped us get through this pandemic are, are greatly appreciated. And we all have our favorite uh, folks at the grocery stores and, and who have helped us and, and have maintained a cheerful disposition as much as possible during some pretty tough times. And I think we're finally getting to the end of it. Mr. Devon, your report. Yes, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, just wanted to uh, remind you of our workshop next Monday. We're going to present the uh, uh, ADA self-assessment and transition plan. We'll have another update on waste hauling. Very good. Do we have any report from our esteemed city attorney? Not from me, Your Honor. Thank you very much. Uh, we are adjourned. Go watch some basketball. Go Bears. <laughs>